Praise the Lord. Are you there? He said, Praise the Lord. The Lord touch every life tonight in Jesus' name. You're coming to the Bible study, it will be profitable in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we bless your name for our Bible study. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your love. Thank you because we're always on your heart. And everyone here and everyone listening is on your heart. And we're asking, Lord, that you do for us much more than we ever would expect in Jesus' name. Enlighten us. Lift us up. Encourage your people. We pray, Lord, wherever there is any suffering, take it away in Jesus' name. And confirm the truth of your word in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Today we're studying from Mark chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 1. We're studying all through to verse 12. Mark chapter 2, reading from verse 1. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway, immediately, many were gathered together, in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come near unto him for the press, for the crowd, for the multitude, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their face, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sin be forgiven thee. Verse 10. But that she may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He says to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, he took up his bed, and went forth before them all. In so much that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. The Lord bless the reading of his word. The man was sick, helplessly sick, hopelessly sick, terribly sick. He was paralyzed and he was impotent. He couldn't do anything by himself. Four men carried him on a couch, on a bed, like a blanket that they stretched him on, and they took their place in each of the four corners. They knew that Jesus Christ was there, like you know Jesus Christ is here tonight. And when they could not enter to take him to the presence of Christ, they went to the top of the roof, and they removed one tile, and they dropped him, right in the presence of Christ. And Jesus saw their faith, faith in action. Like your faith, you will see your faith. And then he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. You know, if you were there that day, and you came to him, and they brought you to him like that, he would have told you the same thing. Your sins be forgiven thee. But you know today is here and he's telling you the same thing because of his love his compassion that does not fail he declares to you tonight your sins are forgiven thee and then that's not the end he now 
manifested his power to raise him up and he said arise take up thy bed and go thy way to thine house if you were the one they carried to him like that that day he would have told you the same thing arise sickness is gone arise your infirmity is gone arise your weakness is gone take up thy bed go back home with your health and with your miracle tonight we're looking at this story and at this event and i'm talking to you on total redemption from christ our savior total redemption from christ our savior the whole event and the whole episode is divided into three parts number one faith in the sufficiency of christ's ability that's exactly what christ saw those four people they had faith in christ and then the paralytic man himself he had faith in christ and he saw that faith faith in the sufficiency of christ's ability number two forgiveness of all sins through christ's atonement christ the lamp of god that taketh away the sin of the world he knew what he came to do and he knew by his stripes we're going to be healed and before he went to the cross he wanted the man to enjoy and to benefit from the atonement he will make on the cross of calvary and so he said son thy sin be forgiven thee forgiveness of all sins through christ's atonement number three freedom from all sickness in your life on your wife on your children amen, amen. On every loved one around your family freedom tonight in Jesus name Amen. freedom from all sickness by Christ's authority Christ's authority Christ Jesus has the power he has the power to forgive he has the power to deliver he has the power to heal he has the power to set free jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever you will not go back home empty-handed let's come to number one faith in the sufficiency of christ's ability let's see where the chapter started and what we find christ doing as he began look at this i'm looking at it from chapter 2 verse 1 and again he entered into capernaum again he entered into capernaum what does that mean to us he had been in capernaum before look at chapter 1 verse 21 and they went into Capernaum straightway on the Sabbath day and he entered into the synagogue and he taught he taught the people that was in chapter 1 that's why again he says now he's come back he's come back he has come back to you tonight and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noise that he was in the house look at verse 2 and straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them no not so much as about the dawn and all those people the crowd and the multitude that came what did he do to them the latter part of verse two and he preached the word unto them and he preached the word unto them look at mark chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 34 mark chapter 6 reading from verse 34 and jesus when he came out so much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were a sheep not having a shepherd see what he did and he began to teach them many things he began to teach them many things what did he teach them many things because faith comes by hearing 
the faith to be saved the faith to be healed the faith to be delivered the faith to be sanctified the faith to be purified the faith to be empowered and the faith to go through life walking by faith that faith comes by hearing that's why when you saw the multitude in you there was one thing to give them the watch of life the word of grace, the word of God. We're looking at Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I pray the word you hear tonight will bring up faith in your heart. Lift up your faith. Increase your faith energize your faith and your faith will not disappoint you will not fail in jesus name why is faith so important hebrews chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 6 hebrews chapter 11 we're reading from verse 6 it says but without faith it's impossible to please him if you're going to pray your prayer cannot please him without faith if you're living your life cannot please him without faith if you're acting you're doing anything you know, your life cannot please him without faith but without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to god must believe that's what happened to those four people that brought the paralytic they came to christ and they believed they believed in christ's ability from what they had heard of the testimonies of other people from what they had heard of the declaration of christ himself telling them with god all things are possible telling them if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth hearing that they came to him bringing the sick of the palsy and they found the way to lead that man in his presence he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can tell by their action they diligently sought the Lord. You can tell by their action they were not careless about seeking him. They were not haphazard in seeking him. They were not superficial in seeking him. They sought him diligently come back to mark chapter 2 and i'm reading from verses 3 4 and 5 mark chapter 2 reading from verse 3 and they come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy which was born of four and when they could not come near unto him for the press it's talking about a crowd there, the press, a multitude there, the crowd, the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Verse 5 And when Jesus saw their faith, he saw their faith, he saw their faith. As we think about faith, Number one, there's the action of faith. He saw it, their action. Going to the rooftop, removing a tile, and letting the man down. That's the action of faith. Number two, we see the access by faith. Access. They wanted to get access to Christ and bring the man in front of Christ and faith found a way. They didn't say it's impossible. We'll go back home. We cannot have access. We cannot reach him. We cannot touch him. The access of faith. Number three, the accounting of faith. Accounting of faith. They counted it down. They said, all we need to do is get this man in front of Jesus. And once he gets there, it is done. The accounting of faith. And tonight, you'll touch Christ. But you put action to your faith. But you have access of faith. And then you will account it by faith that this is what the Lord will do. And that faith will work mightily in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, the action of faith. 
the action of faith. I'm reading from James chapter 2. James chapter 2. I read from verse 17. In James chapter 2, reading from verse 17, even so, he faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Faith, I believe in Christ. I believe he can heal. I believe he can deliver. If he doesn't have action, not works, then it's alone and it's dead. Look at verse 20. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Faith without action, there must be the action of faith. And the action gets you to Jesus. And you say, I must get to Jesus by all means. And I will take whatever action is necessary. Would you know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Look at verse 26. For the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Come to Hebrews chapter 11. And let's see the action of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7. It says, By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet. Things not seen as yet. The Lord told him a flood was coming. He ought to build an ark. If he just said, I believe, I believe, I believe the word of God. I believe the utterance of the Almighty. If he did nothing, that belief would be in vain. He moved with fear, prepared an act for the saving of his house. That's the faith. That's the action. He built an act for the saving, for the protection. For the preservation of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. The faith that did something, the faith that built the ark, and the faith that acted because he believed the word of the Lord. When the word of God comes to you and he says, Repent. Because the judgment at the end of a life for sinning. If you really believe there is judgment, you'll do something about that and you'll flee away from the judgment to come. Look at verse 8, the action of faith. Faith always has action. And it's a visible action. It's a recognizable action. And it is the action of that faith that the Lord will see. And then he will say, your blessing be upon you. Tonight, you'll have the action of faith. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. And then we're told, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. He didn't say, seeing is believing. Show it to me. Let me see it. On the naked word of the Almighty God, he accepted that. He believed that. And he knew what God has said will come to pass. And he told him, come out of the country where you are. And he obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went. That obedience and that going out is the action of faith. Whenever God speaks to us, we show that we believe God when we act on the word appropriate action immediate action prompt action because our hearts believe in God look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24 by faith Moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God he knew that God had promised the land, a land of promise for the children of Israel. 
and he knew that if he stayed in Egypt, he will not have the blessing of being a partaker. And so action now, he chose. The choice you make is your action. And it says he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Look at verse 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt. He left Egypt. That leaving Egypt, that coming out of Egypt is the action of his faith. If the Lord is telling you, you're in corruption, you're in evil, you're living in sin, and this is going to bring damnation and condemnation. If you died in that condition, you'll perish and be damned and be doomed and go to hell forever. If you actually believe that word immediately without wasting time and immediately without dilly dallying, immediately without thinking of this, this way or that way, you know the Lord has spoken, you will come out. That is the action of faith. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. When God has told you something, that this is what you do. The action of faith makes you to forget about the king, about your neighbors, about your family, about what they will say. Not fearing the wrath of the king. Not fearing the wrath of the people that might oppose your decision. And when that fear is not there and you believe the Lord accepts the word and you rise up to do what God has demanded of your life, that is the action the action of faith and God always looks at that action of faith and he always brings a blessing that's why it says by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seen him who is invisible number two there is the access of faith access of faith you see that those people for men carrying the man they needed to have access and to go through the door there was no access through the window there was no access but he said we will not give up you will not give up i said you will not give up you must have access to the lord if you give up and you say well i can't get to him there's no access every road is blocked and all the opportunities are gone that's not faith faith will make a way where there's no way so that you have access unto the lord romans chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 1 romans chapter 5 the access of faith you make sure you get to the lord and once you have access then you are able to get the salvation you're able to get the healing and you're able to get the blessing the Lord has for you. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that justified by faith. How did that justification come? Verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. If we are giving up, there will be no access. If we said, repenting of sin, turning away from sin, having the Lord Jesus Christ, becoming a new creature in Christ, that's too much, we'll not have access. It says, by whom? Through Christ also, we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God access by faith it says over there we have access to the peace of god peace comes through faith and it is faith that grants you access to that peace let's look at acts chapter 15 verse 9 acts chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 9 in verse 9 it says and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith 
purifying their hearts by faith you know you are going to have access to purity purity of heart sanctification holiness by faith you have access to the peace that comes in salvation through faith you have access to the purity that comes in sanctification through faith any kind of blessing you expect in any kind of blessing spiritual for your soul for your spirit and physical for your body for your life for your family any kind of blessing you have access only by faith second thessalonians i'm reading from chapter one second thessalonians chapter one i'm reading from verse 11 second thessalonians chapter one verse 11 wherefore also we pray always for you that our god will count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power faith with power faith with power is faith that grants us access to the power of the holy ghost you're saved you have access by faith sanctified access by faith and you endued with power from on high in the baptism in the holy ghost is by faith it's faith that grants us access into those blessings peace purity power peace purity power salvation sanctification holy ghost baptism we have access to everything all by faith number three the accounting of faith the accounting of faith those four people they were calculating this man will get well this man will get well and this man in front of me will get well this sister in front of me will get well they already accounted each down before it happened why because faith settles the account and faith says it will be done look at hebrews chapter 11 reading from verse 17 hebrews chapter 11 verse 17 by faith abraham when he was tried offered up isaac and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that in isaac shall thy seed be called accounting that god was able to raise him up accounting by faith that god was able to raise him up how about these four people that took the paralytic man and when they could not go in through the door because of the press because of the crowd they had to go to the roof and the man himself he didn't say i'm feeling dizzy i'm feeling dizzy if you carry me up like that by the time i get down to the ground i'm gone i'm dead let's forget about it no he also accounted it by faith and he knew once they get me to the presence of christ even if i'm dizzy even if my head is turning even if i die i get to the presence of jesus who is the resurrection and life i will come alive again i will come alive i said i come alive accounting 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 verse 19 that god was able to raise him up even from the dead even from the dead he says god was able our god is able somebody there my god is able you see whatever blessing you need in your life salvation our god is able no matter how deep and died in sin you are salvation is available and you have number one the action the action that makes you repent the action that makes you come to the lord the action that makes you to know there's no other way is the way of salvation it's in christ and you have the action of faith and you turn away from your sin and you believe and you embrace and you take jesus christ as your personal savior your salvation is sure and definite in jesus name 
and the access to gauge to Christ to take every roadblock out and to take every barrier out and to take every sin that could have hindered you take everything out you'll have access by faith to the multiple blessings of the Lord in Jesus name and you count it done. Once I get to him, I know it will be done. Once you are connected with Christ tonight, it will be done in your life in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. God is able. I didn't hear you. I said God is able. We're looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 25. It says, wherefore he is able. Always have that in your mind. You have a request in prayer. He is able. You want to be strong. He is able. You want to be steadfast in the Lord. He is able. You want to believe in God for a great miracle. He is able. Wherefore God is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Thank God tonight, my God is able. I said, my God is able. Will accomplish every good thing you desire in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 20. Now unto him that is able, unto him tell me that is able, Unto him, say it aloud, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Able to do. And those four people, as they brought the paralytic in the presence of Christ, they knew about God's ability, about Christ's ability, and they knew that Christ is able. If you know beyond any shadow of doubt, like those people knew, and you say, My God is able, you will not miss your blessing tonight. Now, unto Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power that walketh in us that power will walk inside you unto him be glory in the church by christ jesus throughout all ages world without end amen it's done in your life it's confirmed in your life Always remember when you go to pray, our God is able. That's what they knew. That's what they thought about. That's what they believed. That's why they had action of faith, access by faith, accounting by faith. Jude, I'm reading from verse 24. Has only one chapter. Jude, verse 24. Now unto him that is able, able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Amen. Faith works out all things that are needed for us, for heaven, in our lives through faith we're saved through faith we're healed through faith we're sanctified through faith we're empowered through faith we conquer through faith we're provided for and through faith we are preserved let's go to point number two now forgiveness of all sins through christ's atonement Forgiveness of all sins through Christ's atonement. We're reading from Mark chapter 2, reading from verse 5. When Jesus saw their face, 
he said unto the sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven thee you might have thought that the man did not even ask for forgiveness you know when somebody is sick he might be already thinking in the heart how did i come to this what brought me to this am i so helpless am i so hopeless that four people are to carry me and i couldn't jump up by myself how is it i'm in this physical condition i know i've been a sinner i know i've been a terrible person when i was well when i was strong i used to run here and run there and i ran to dangerous places and i ran to places that made me more and more of a sinner he had been thinking of a sinner if i had known i wouldn't have gone there if i had known i wouldn't have done that if i had known i wouldn't have defiled myself and because of that thinking jesus knew he knew his heart he knew his thoughts and the first thing jesus said all those four people that carried him they carried him there for healing they didn't know the inner struggle the inner strife and the inner sinfulness and the inner sorrow and the inner confusion but jesus knew that's why he said son thy sins be forgiven thee uh, look at verse 6 but there was certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts there were scribes there they were unbelievers pharisees there they were unbelievers there were what they call doctors of the law and they were unbelievers but any scribe around you will not hinder your salvation any scribe around you will not hinder the pronouncement of jesus christ thy sins be forgiven thee and will not hinder your healing in jesus name look at verse 7 why does this man do speak blasphemies who can forgive sins but god only that's true that's true who can forgive sins but god only he is god he is god that's why he could forgive sin they were looking at him like themselves is a preacher like us jesus is more than a preacher is a human being like us jesus is more than a man he is god the very son of god and because they didn't know that he is god that's why they were saying who can forgive sin but god only was age and immediately when jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves he said unto them why reason ye these things in your heart why are you thinking of this a blasphemy whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and take up thy bed and walk don't you know he could heal the body and he could also heal the soul it's as easy for him even to raise the dead or to heal the sick or to cleanse the leper or to make a soul that is a deep in sin to come alive and to be cleansed and to be saved everything is easy for the lord and everything in your life is easy for the lord your salvation is easy for the lord your sanctification purifying easy for the lord and your baptism in the holy ghost how can i be baptized in the holy ghost i'm saved i'm sanctified it's easy for the lord he'll do it in jesus name your deliverance and the breaking of every yoke in your life is easy for the lord it will be done in jesus name in verse 10 but that she may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins what happens before that forgiveness comes how does that forgiveness come look at these three things number one sorrow for sin i'm sorry for my sin i'm sorry for my evil i'm sorry for my iniquity if you're still in a state of enjoying sin 
wanting to continue in sin forgiveness will not come if you're still with the might of i like it i love it i will never leave it okay jesus save me but understand i love my sin so much i will continue after the salvation you'll never be saved but number one there is sorrow for sin number two there's separation from your sin separation from your sin once you are going to embrace christ as your savior and you are going to keep to him be connected with him as your savior you break the link between you and the sin separation from sins number three shielded or shielding from sinning he shields you he protects you after you are saved that you don't continue in the sin forgiveness comes number one because there is sorrow for sin we're looking at second corinthians chapter seven second corinthians chapter seven i'm reading from verse 10 in second corinthians chapter 7 verse 10 for godly sorrow what is repentance to salvation godly sorrow what is repentance to salvation that's a person that says genuinely i'm sorry genuinely i have seen Genuinely, I brought all this calamity on myself. Genuinely, I went the evil way. I became a terrible sinner, and this suffering has come upon me because of my sin. For godly sorrow, what is repentance to salvation, not to be regretted of salvation not to be uh, reversed in our lives then to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world walketh death look at luke chapter 7 sorrow for sin sorrow for sin you're so sorry for the evil you've done in the past that you say lord give me the chance give me your grace and i will not continue in my sin anymore it is that sorrow for sin that makes your repentance genuine that makes your repentance real and that sorrow for sin drives you away from the sin and drives you to the savior luke chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 40 luke chapter 7 verse 40 Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have some words to say unto thee. And he says, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor, which had two debtors, and one owed him five hundred pence, and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, and thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with tears. She was crying, a terrible sinner. I feel sorry for my sin. And the tears were flowing enough to wash the feet of Jesus and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Her glory, that's her hair. She used it, she didn't have any other sin to wipe the tears away. Thou givest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. My feet. The feet were not washed. The feet were dusty. And yet she was kissing the dusty feet and wiping the tears away with her ear. My head with oil that did not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment she didn't feel worthy to touch the head of jesus 
or the hand of Jesus or even the clothes of Jesus but the very feet of Jesus wherefore I say unto thee as sins which are many are forgiven for she loved much but to whom little is forgiven the same man loveth little she had sorrow for sin I'm so sorry I'm a dirty person I'm a defiled person I'm a sinful person and because of that sorrow for sin asking for forgiveness the Lord said in verse 48 he said unto her thy sins are forgiven thy sins are forgiven when you have sorrow for sin like that I'm sorry for what I've done and I will do that no more forgiveness will come I didn't hear your amen. amen. Proverbs chapter 28, I read from verse 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. He will just come, forgive me, forgive me, save me, save me. No sorrow for sin, no confession of sin. There's no forgiveness available for such a person. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso confesses and forsaketh them. Confesses and forsaketh them. I know the danger, I forsake. I know the doom, I forsake. I know the damnation that will follow the sinning, I forsake. And forsaketh them shall have mercy. Number two is separation from all those sins. We're looking at John chapter 5, verse 14. John chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, forgiveness is not just a common thing uh, that I get and after getting that forgiveness then I go my way doing the same thing, uh, sinful things I did before. Forgiveness comes because I had sorrow for sin. I regret I ever did something like that and when you have that sorrow for sin and eventually you are forgiven, you are separated from those sins. We're looking at John chapter 5 5 verse 14 John chapter 5 verse 14 up to what Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him behold thou art made whole sin no more lest a worse thing come unto thee this is the man that had been sick paralyzed impotent for 38 years and he must have thought all those many years when all these people are forsaking him i have no man to pick me up and drop me in the pool and so i remain here he might have been thinking everybody has rejected me everybody is neglecting me because i was so bad and i can't get there at all these 38 years how long am i going to remain here and Jesus Jesus came there and healed him and now he told him you know what you must be separated from sin because if you go back to the sinful life worse things will happen to you we're looking at John chapter 8 verse 11 John chapter 8 verse 11 she said no man Lord here is the woman that could have died just like that if they had mocked her because they found her in a terrible scene of adultery and they took her they caught her they arrested her and instead of dealing with her in uh, with great hot fiery judgment killing her like that she would have gone to hell but he brought her to Jesus and said we caught this woman here is what she did Moses and the Lord said stone her what do you say want to hear from you if jesus had not shown mercy on her if jesus has not had not showed his wisdom to say he that has no sin let him cast the first stone that woman would have died and she would have gone to hell and she knew that 
and she felt sorry she felt sorry if i come out of this if i get out of this never will i do this again look at verse 11 and jesus said unto her neither do i condemn thee i can forgive the past but now go and sin no more number one sorrow for sin number two separation from sin i'm looking at first corinthians chapter 15 verse 34 first corinthians chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 34 awake to righteousness and sin not you see that after we're saved after we're born again after we receive forgiveness from the lord awake to righteousness and sin not second corinthians chapter 7 i read from verse 11. second corinthians chapter 7 verse 11 for behold the self same thing that she sorrowed after a godly sort what carefulness it wrought in you after the forgiveness after the salvation they became careful that's evidence of real salvation that's the evidence that the touch of the Lord, the transformation of the Lord, had come to such a person in salvation. What carefulness is wrought in you? Yea. What clearing of yourselves? Yea. What indignation? They were angry at themselves for the evil things they have done. They were angry at themselves for their past carelessness. They were angry at the sin and the people that made them fall into that sin. It says, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge in all things, ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. There is sorrow for sin, the separation from sin, the shielding from sin, shielding from sin. Now you pray to the Lord, O oh Lord, shield me, protect me, preserve me, so that I will not go back to those sins anymore. Psalm 19, I read from verse 13. Psalm 19, we're reading from verse 13. In verse 13, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Keep me, protect me, preserve me, shield me from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. I want to remain innocent. Thank you, Lord. You have cleansed me. You have purged me. And you are preserving me. Every day, I want to count on your grace and count on your strength and remain righteous so that I'm shielded from sinning. Look at Psalm 119, verse 133. Psalm 119, and in verse 133. 133 order my steps in thy word and let not iniquity have dominion over me shield me protect me now that i'm forgiven now that i'm saved i don't ever want to go back to those evil things you shield me and you will not allow iniquity to have dominion over me romans chapter 6 i read from verse 12 romans chapter 6 we're reading from verse 12 in verse 12 let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body you're saved let not sin reign in your mortal body you've got the forgiveness of god through the mercy of christ let not therefore sin reign in your mortal body that you should be each in the laws thereof neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin 
let it be gone, gone forever, seen of the past, and it's not coming back again. Let your life be protected by the grace of God, by the strength of the Lord, by the consciousness of the presence of Christ in your life, who sees everything that is done, hears every conversation that is made, and he knows about every event in your life. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God for sin shall not have dominion over you amen sin shall not have dominion over you say it will not have it over me Sin shall not have dominion over me. The Lord confirm it to your life in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 1. In First Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 5. First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 5. It says in verse 5, Who are kept by the power of God kept by the power of God, preserved by the power of God, protected by the power of God, shielded by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Forgiveness of all sins through Christ's atonement. Point number three now, freedom from all sickness, by Christ's authority, freedom. Somebody help me shout, freedom. Coming to you. I say coming to you. Will establish your life. Freedom for you in Jesus' name. I'm reading now from verse 10 of Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, I read from verse 10 but that ye may know that the Son of Man has power. Has he changed? I said, has Jesus changed? He has power on earth to forgive sin. He says to the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, arise, take up thy bed, go thy way into thine house and tell me the word there are you there tell me the word and immediately he arose took up his bed and went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed and glorified god saying we never saw it on this fashion I thought somebody would say amen. amen. This year, the Lord will do spectacular things in your life. Amen. That you'll say, since I've been praying, since I've been reading the Bible, and since I've been laying hold of the promises of God, I never saw it on this fashion. Amen. This year will be glorious for you. Amen. This year will be wonderful for you. I never saw it on this fashion. You see what the Lord is doing here? He said, the man free, freedom from all sickness by Christ's authority. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the cure for his sickness. The cure for his sickness. There's cure here today for you. It will kill you. I said it will heal you. He will deliver you the cure for his sickness. Number two, the command of our Savior. Take up thy bed. The command of thy Savior, of our Savior. Number three is courage before the scribes. Don't forget, the scribes were still there. The scribes did not believe. 
the scribe was looking at him as if, what are you doing there? The scribes were saying, this is blasphemy. The scribes were saying, nothing will happen, nothing will happen. And in the presence of those scribes, he was courageous and he stood up until all the people said, we have never seen it in this fashion. In your life, scribes will not hinder your miracle. Scorners will not hinder your healing. And the scoffers will not hinder your total freedom in Jesus' name. Look at it, number one, the cure for his sickness. We're looking at uh, chapter 4 of Luke. Luke chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 32. Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. In your life tonight, the word will come with power. Verse 36, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this, that with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirit, and they come out. And they come out. And they come out. You will not carry any property of Satan back home in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Somebody shout power. Anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. He will always do good in your life. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Has he changed? In your life, will he change? When you pray, will he change? He will answer your prayer. Look at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 11. Mark chapter 2. We're looking at verse 11, the command of our Savior, the command of our Savior. I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 of that Mark chapter 2. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. When he was sick, paralyzed, incapacitated, impotent, helpless, hopeless, for men should mercy. And he carried him. Now Jesus healed him. And he said, take up thy bed. Walk. Go back to thy house. Those four men were still there. And the man did not say, come and help me carry my bed. When you were sick, they helped you. Impotent, they helped you. Now you are well. And the Lord said, now that you are well, what others were doing for you before? Don't remain helpless and hopeless because you are no more sick, you are well. Begin a new series of actions in your life. Amen. Amen. Why did he say take up thy bed? Because he was no more a paralytic. So he must not remain a parasite. You are no more a paralytic. Therefore, you will no more remain a parasite. A parasite is somebody always leaning on others. Help me carry it. Help me bring it. Help me take it. Help me do that. Help me walk. Help me fend. Help me use this and use that. No more a paralytic and so no more 
a parasite, you will take it up yourself. What you ought to do, they've been doing for you. Now life has come. Now healing has come. Now power has come. Take up your bed yourself and demonstrate that you are no more a paralytic. It will happen in Jesus' name. You know, maybe you don't have any bed to take up because what you are to take up is different. Look at what Jesus is telling us in Luke chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. It says, And he said unto them all, If any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Take up his cross daily and follow me now grace has come take up your cross instead of looking at everybody and say look at my cross look at my cross look at my cross take it up for me no you have grace no you have strength you connect to the strength of christ and now you will take up that cross and you will walk victoriously in jesus name I'm looking at Ephesians chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 13. Ephesians chapter 6 and we're looking at a verse, uh, looking at verse 13. It says in verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Take unto you the whole armor of God. It says, now the grace of God is available and you are a child of God and the courage of uh, salvation and the courage of sanctification and the courage of the spirit endearment has come upon your life. You'll not be going to the prayer warriors every time. Help me, uh, give me the armor and put the armor on me. Help me, this one is happening, that one is happening. Stop all that. You're no more a paralytic. You'll no more be a parasite in Jesus' name. The Lord is saying, he told that man, take up thy bed. And he's telling you, you are the one. You'll not be, you'll not be, you know, crying and weeping and always saying, I don't know why this is happening. The grace of God has come and the strength of God has come. Take up your cross. You will do it in Jesus' name. And take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. I will stand. I said I will stand. You know somebody that something is happening at night. Uh, something is walking in uh, at the window. And he saw that. Then he'll pick his telephone and call and wake up the coordinator. And wake up the group pastor. Uh, pastor, something is happening. Why are you doing that? You have the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, cast that sin out there. It will go out in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, it is like a desolate challenge because the Lord wants you to use that faith. You are getting faith here. I said you are getting faith here. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And therefore, because of that, maybe your husband or your wife or somebody is making a little trouble and this and that. You never think you should make use of your own faith and take up your own bed. And then you pick up the phone and you're calling somebody uh, outside the stage and you're calling them and waking them up in the night. I am suffering. I about the church there the church doesn't look at me i don't have this i don't have this you are not a beggar i am not a beggar i am not a beggar it says god shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus i will have all grace sufficient for me and my grace is sufficient for you i'm not going to ask somebody from america from europe i'm not going to ask her from another state far away i'm not going to ask other people hey, you know what i'm going through here come and help me here this bed i want to carry it but i can't you can carry it you will carry it i said you will carry it the strength of the lord comes to you today the power of the lord comes to you today and all that begging and whining and crying and all that everything has stopped tonight hey, look at look look at verse 16 above all above all above all taking the shield of faith who will take the shield of faith 
I said you will take the shield of faith Taking the shield of faith Whereby, wherewith Ye shall be able to quench You will be able Because your God is able you will be able because the word of God dwells inside you. You will be able because your faith will not fail. Your faith will not fail. Your faith will not fail. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Look at this, look at this, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation. Nobody else will take it for you. I will take it by myself. I said I will take it by myself and take the shield of uh, and take uh, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. I'm coming to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 8. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 8. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught. But we wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable unto any of you, not because we have not power but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us here is paul the apostle paul the apostle did not say i'm a preacher i'm a pastor i'm an evangelist and the weight of ministry is so much and i knock at the door there can you give me some bread and knock at the door there can you give me something no he took over his own life he said these hands are good enough to walk i will walk somebody there i will walk he was not a parasite leaning on other people you have two legs you can walk you can jump you can run you have two hands that are active and strong and you have eyes to see you have mind to see and i say lord that can be done in your community take up job take up something take up your bed and walk nobody will take it up for you again now, they have their own beds to take they have their own responsibilities to take and they have their own challenges to take you will take your own i will not be a parasite say it aloud i will not be a parasite you will not be a parasite in jesus name come back here now to chapter 2 of mark mark chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 12 immediately and immediately he arose and took up his bed and went before them all before them all before them all who are they all there look at verse 6 now and there was such a scribe sitting there reasoning in their hearts why does this man do speak blasphemies those coffers were there corners were there but the paralytic man did not look at them i will not look at them the scribes i will not look at them the scorners i will not look at them you are not saying it the scribes the scorners the scoffers in their presence you will rise up in their presence you'll pick up your cross in their presence you'll take a new job in their presence you will rise up and walk in their presence you will live the christian life before them all without any fear with courage you are going to walk triumphantly in jesus name look at matthew chapter 5 verse 16 matthew chapter 5 verse 16 let your light so shine before men before men before men as you go out today everything you have learned the new conviction that came to you the new courage that came to you the new power that came to you the new insight that came to you you will march out triumphantly and then you will take up 
this new thing the Lord has told you before men that they may see your good works and they will glorify your Father which is in heaven. You glorify God. Your life will glorify God. And your new activity and your new life will glorify God. Your new victory will glorify God. And your new dominion will glorify God. Take up your bed, rise up and walk. And immediately took up his bed and he walked before them all. Rise up and then you are going to walk in victory as you go back home. You are going to walk with joy as you go back home. You are going to walk in strength as you go back home. You are going to take up your bed yourself. And you are going to take up a job yourself. You are going to take up an employment yourself. You are going to take up something that you will do. And it is not that you're a parasite again. I'm no more a parasite. I'm no more a parasite. I take up my cross. I take up the armor of God. I take up everything the Lord has given me. I go forth into victory. Open your mouth and pray like a victorious, courageous, conquering person because your faith is dynamic and your faith is going to work.